Quizzes are a fantastic way of not only getting to know your audience a little bit better, but you can also use them as a conversion focus boosting tool by segmenting your website's visitors into different categories and better aligning your message with each of them. And this is exactly what we're going to do in this video. Let's take a look at how we can create advanced interactive quizzes on WordPress to get a better understanding of who our audience is and how we can better market to them. Let's dive in. Okay, before we get started with the meat of this video, you need to know that all of my quizzes, including the one that we're going to be looking at today, are powered by Thrive Quiz Builder. And I have some good news. You can grab a license for Thrive Quiz Builder at the best possible price by clicking the link down in the description box. All right, let me put you into some context as to what we're going to be doing in this video. I want to use a quiz as a lead magnet and I want to help my website's visitors identify where they should be looking to make investments and to help them identify what type of investors they are. And at the same time, this is obviously going to help me segment them by their profiles, allowing me to reach out to them via email in a more personalized way. I mean, think about it. Isn't it cool to be able to express yourself in a given way with someone whose net worth is $50,000? and in a totally different way with someone whose net worth is $10 million. And to do this, we're going to replicate something that I had to do with a client of mine a few years ago. You see, a few years back, I helped a financial investment firm segment potential leads by what kind of investors they were. And you know, in other words, we had an investor assessment quiz at the very top of their homepage that would allow visitors to understand what kind of investment decisions they should be thinking about making depending on a few different factors. And of course, at the same time, that was also going to allow us to segment leads by, you know, how big their portfolio was, how much risk they were willing to take, and, you know, overall, what type of potential investors we were dealing with. And so, of course, we crafted up a series of questions for our quiz that would help us segment people into five different types of investors. You could either be a sea turtle, you could be a dolphin, you could be a squid, a whale, or an orca. And of course, depending on which answers you were picking throughout our quiz, we were weighting your responses in a way that would allow us to classify you into one of our five different categories. Now, before I show you the setup, I need you to understand a couple of things. You can't afford to make your quiz extremely long. Our quiz consisted of seven questions. And you know, the cool thing is that Thrive Quiz Builder makes quizzing fun and engaging. And so you shouldn't have too many issues getting people to power through a short quiz. You know, just don't make it 50 questions long because no one's gonna power through that on their first visit. And you know, what I'm trying to say here is that you need to make your questions and answers as good and as thoughtful as you can because you don't have a lot of time to get to know the person taking the quiz. All you get is five to 10 questions. Okay, before I show you my questions and how I set up my quiz, let's quickly talk about two Thrive Quiz Builder concepts, tags and weights. Tags are just that, tags. It's a simple way of adding a label to someone who selects a given response to a question. For example, if a question in my quiz is, you know, what is your total net worth? And one of my responses is over a million dollars, I can have Thrive Quiz Builder add a you know, a millionaire tag to everyone that selects that answer. And that tag will then get sent over to my email marketing service as well if I so desire. And guess what? If I now want to craft an email whose message is tailored only to millionaires, I can now do so because I've identified everyone who has marked their net worth as being over $1 million. Tags are a really cool way of adding labels to help us identify who users are and what responses they've selected throughout our quiz. Weights, on the other hand, are important as well because these are the things that are going to determine under which category our visitors are going to fall under. Remember, in my quiz, they could either be sea turtles, which would be small investors, followed by dolphins, squids, whales, or orcas, which would be the super wealthy investors. And so as we craft up our questions and answers, we're going to be telling Thrive Quiz Builder to weight each answer differently for a given category. This is gonna make sense in a second. Let me just quickly show you some of my questions and answers. So the first question that I had in my quiz is, as an investor, which of the following best describes your liquidity goals? I am a long-term investor, I am an active trader, I am a long-term investor, but I am a little bit worried that I might need to cash out in the near future, 
or you know, I'm not in a rush to sell, but if a strategy isn't working, I'm gonna be able to cut my losses and move on. In this question, can you see how I'm using tags to clearly label the kind of investor that I'm dealing with? And you know, these tags make sense too, right? I mean, someone who is in the market for the long run, but knows when to cut his losses is a pro, and someone who actively trades is a trader. And a small comment on weights. I'm not weighting every answer, and that's because not every answer needs to be weighted. Only answers that clearly put users in a given category should be weighted. In this case for me, someone who knows how to actively trade as a whale, I'm not marking them as an orca because even, you know, even though you're a trader, you may not be super wealthy, but they deserve at least to be considered a whale because you need to know markets inside and out if you wanna make money trading. Trading is hard. And to be honest, it really is up to you to determine which answers put people in which categories. For example, you could very well think that if someone selects the third option, you know, being in it for the long run, but showing off some signs about being scared, they should be categorized as a dolphin with a weight of two. And you know, that would be totally fine. Now, before I keep going with more questions, let me get this question straight out of the way because it's a question that a lot of people uh, have when they're starting out with quizzes. Tony, why not simply give every answer the same weight, right? I mean, why not give every answer that is indeed weighted a weight of one? And the answer is simple. I keep weights ranging from one to five. Depending on how confident I am about categorizing someone in a given way, based on the answer that they've picked, they'll either get a lower or higher weight, or no weight at all. Let's go back to our first question to demonstrate this. The question here is, which of the following best describes your liquidity goals? I'm categorizing traders as whales, and I'm moderately confident that someone that knows how to day trade should be considered a whale. Hence why I'm giving this response a weight of three. I'm not super confident that just because this person knows how to trade, they are going to be whale wealthy material, but I think you do deserve some solid points for knowing how to trade, which is why I gave this response a weight of three. Let's go with a little bit of an easier example. Let's go back to the question about what is your net worth? If your response is over $1 million, I'm gonna categorize you as an orca with a weight of five because I'm 100% confident that you've got big bags of money. In contrast, if your net worth is under $10,000, I'm going to categorize you as a sea turtle and I'm going to give your response a weight of five too because you're outright telling me that you're not a big investor. Some questions will allow you to clearly identify people and know how to categorize them and some other questions you may not even use any weights at all because they will be more open-ended and they will serve more as questions for you to know your audience in detail without knowing how to clearly identify them yet. Like the next question, which of the following best describes the assets you currently hold in order of importance? And you can either pick cash, bonds, precious metals, equities, or real estate. You see how this question allows me to get more familiarized with the profile of this investor, I mean, it can definitely help me understand where he is looking to invest. But none of these answers tell me if they're a small or big investor. I can't tell if they're a sea turtle or a squid or a dolphin or an orca, which is why I'm not giving any of these answers any category or weight, just tags. Let's look at the inverse of this example with one more question. Which of the following best describes your investment portfolio? And answers range from anywhere between less than $10,000 to over $10 million. Can you see how in this case, they are literally telling me how much they are worth? And so I can clearly put them under one of my five categories, right? Which is why regardless of which answer they pick, I'm going to categorize them with a weight of five because I'm super confident that I can clearly identify the type of investor that I'm dealing with. Okay, so I've spent some time setting up our questions and going over how to set up our quiz to clearly segment users according to their investor profile. Now, it's important to understand that you need to clearly know the difference between your categories. In my case, for this video to keep it simple, it just came down to their net worth, right? Depending on how much you're worth, you're either a sea turtle or a squid or a dolphin. But if you're dealing with something that isn't net worth, you need to make sure you establish parameters that help you identify users and how to categorize them. For example, in my first question, I wasn't dealing with net worth. 
but I knew that if someone knew how to day trade, I was going to at least give them some oil points. So we have a quiz with some questions and users have successfully powered through it. Now what? Well, now we need to tell them what kind of sea creature they are, right? We, we have to give them the results. But first, we need to set up our opt-in gate. This is where we get to ask people to opt-in into our email list in order to unlock um, you know, their results. Or not, it's up to you to decide whether you wanna force people to actually have to opt-in into your email list or not. With Thrive Quiz Builder, you can do either one. And then we do actually have to show off the results. And what's really cool about category quizzes is that we get to customize the results page for each different type of category. In my case, for example, I remember we gave both a video and a written explanation of what their sea creature implied and how they could move forward with their investment journey. Now, don't forget that you obviously have to connect Thrive Quiz Builder to your email marketing service of choice to send over all of your users' information and be able to create highly targeted email campaigns. Quizzes can be really fun and really useful resources to growing your email list and segmenting traffic. If you found this video useful, a big thumbs up button would be greatly appreciated. I'm down in the comment section below in case you have any questions. And remember that there is a link in the description box down below that you can click on in case you wanna grab a license for Thrive Quiz Builder. Truly appreciate your time. It's been a, a real pleasure and I will see you soon. Thank you.